anatomy is basic, but anatomy is important if you're going to do well on the boards because a lot of the questions will spin off anatomy. The anatomical origins of the muscle. There's an anatomical origin and there's a physiologic origin. What muscle has a different anatomical origin versus its physiologic origin? The superior oblique. So be careful on the boards if they say physiologic origin. What's the physiologic origin of the superior oblique? The trochlea. But its anatomical origin is what? Above this angle of zin. And it's actually extraconal. So there's four rectus muscles. Rectus means straight. Annulus of zin defines where the rectus muscles start from. So interconal is that cone of the four rectus muscles. The inferior oblique muscle is outside that cone. Its origin is the lacrimal fossa. Where's the lacrimal fossa? It's right here. It's un down here. And the inferior oblique muscle, the superior oblique muscle is the one we talked about. Its anatomical origin is above the annulus of zin at the orbital apex, but its physiologic is, you're exactly right, it's a trochlea. The rectus muscles, the closest muscle to the cornea is which muscle? Medial rectus. Why is that important? You have a pterygium, you reoperate, it comes back. What muscle can the cornea specialist under the high magnification of the microscope nicely take off and not even know it? Medial rectus, that happened. He calls me up, he says, oh my God, the eye's way out. He took off a reoperation pterygium and took the medial rectus right off and never knew it. It's only 5.5 millimeters from the cornea. It's right there. These insertions have a horseshoe anatomy with the poles being farther from the cornea than the central aspect of the muscle. And this is only important when you hook a muscle. You've got to go back farther than 5.5 because you've got to go around this. This is probably 8 millimeters back at the pole. You with me? So when you hook a muscle, you've got to go back farther than 5.5. It goes 5.5, 6.57, and 8. How wide is a rectus muscle? About 10 millimeters. It's a good number to remember, 10 millimeters. Which muscle inserts closest and farthest from the limbus? Medial rectus is the closest, and the superior rectus is the farthest. Horseshoe insertion. One of my fellows told me this. The horse is running to the cornea. Is that helpful? It's a horseshoe, and it's the horse is running to the cornea? No, it's not helpful. You don't understand it. Embryologically, in utero, our face our eyes, our orbits are out. And over time, they come in to the straight position. But they don't quite make it all the way. Our orbits actually are out a little bit. They're divergent. So where's our position of rest? What's the position of rest? If we're sleeping, if we're under anesthesia, if we're dead, where do our eyes go? They go out. In fact, the most common form of strabismus, which probably 90% of the general population has, is what? Exophoria. Because our position of rest is parallel to the orbits. And you can see in this diagram, the orbits are going out. And this out orbit is, and our, but our eyes are straight, but that discrepancy between the orbital plane or the muscle plane and the visual axis is what gives us the multiple functions of the vertical rectus muscles. The visual axis is 23 degrees inside or medial to the muscle axis. And that's a number that you'll see on the boards. It's 23 degrees. When would the superior rectus muscle be a pure elevator without secondary and tertiary functions. When the eye rotates out 23 degrees, then it's in line with the superior rectus muscle and it just pulls it straight up. Does that make sense? God gives us strong convergence and constantly counter the divergent orbits. Our eyes are out, so we use convergence to bring our eyes in. Our eyes are out, but we all have convergence. What's our convergence amplitudes? If we want to converge, Give me a number. 10's wrong. 25 to 30 is right. We can converge. You're ever on the boards and you forget what convergence. Remember, you can bring your eyes in, right? That's convergence. What's divergence? Diverging your eyes. Try to diverge. Look at me and try to diverge. Nothing's there. Convergence center in the brain is large. Divergence center, you can't even find it. So our convergence is strong. So God set us up so our orbits are out, but gave us strong convergence to keep our eyes straight. How can you keep your eyes exactly straight? It's convergence. What's our divergence? Six to eight prism diopters. What's our vertical vergence? How can you vertically verge? It's almost nothing. It's one to two prism diopters. Unless you're born with a congenital strabismus, which is incompetent. There's always that unless. If you see a patient with large fusional vergence amplitudes, in other words, their eyes are straight, you cover the eye, and they got a hyper. They blink and they bring it down. They got large vertical fusion. That, that tells you that's a congenital problem or a very slow evolving problem where they learn to fuse it. You understand me? It's not usually a brain tumor. It's not a traumatic superior oblique palsy. It's something that they've had a little bit creeping on and they've been able to control it and now they've been able to control it large. Now here's that superior oblique muscle 
with the trochlea here, it's probably coming across and then back over, muscle axis and is going right through the trochlea, which is the physiologic origin. The medial rectus is a pure adductor. It's got three short things. Number one, shortest distance to the limbus. We already said that. Shortest tendon of the rectus muscles. Here's where they're going to try to confuse you on the boards. What muscle has the shortest tendon? Medial rectus. Wrong. Inferior oblique. What rectus muscle? What extraocular muscle would be inferior oblique? It almost has no tendon. What rectus muscle has the shortest tendon? Medial rectus. Shortest arc of contact, five, is okay. What muscle, rectus muscle, has the shortest arc of contact, and that's the medial rectus muscle? Because the orbit goes out, the lateral rectus has to go out and wrap around, so it's got a large arc of contact. The medial rectus goes straight along the orbit nasally here, and it's got a very short arc of contact. Why is that important? The Fodden operation, where you tack the medial rectus back here to change the moment arm, you can influence the, the arc of contact easily because it's so short, and the lateral rectus is a long arc, arc, large arc of contact. It's very hard to affect that arc of contact. You'd have to pin the muscle to the optic nerve. Which mu rectus muscle has the shortest arc of contact? That's the medial rectus. Medial rectus continued. Which is the most commonly lost muscle during strabismus surgery? Medial rectus. Here's what happens. You lose the medial rectus. It retracts back here, and it's gone. It goes back into the orbital fat. The, superior, the inferior rectus here has a buddy. It's got the inferior oblique. Lockwood's ligament, it attaches, so it's not going to go all the way back. It's going to stay at the inferior oblique. If you want to find a lost inferior rectus, find the inferior oblique, it'll be right there. Lateral rectus also has an attachment to the inferior oblique. The superior rectus, superior oblique. But the medial, nothing. What is the most commonly lost muscle? Medial rectus. Which is the most difficult to find? Medial rectus. Why? It has no connection to another muscle. It doesn't have a connection to an oblique muscle. Horizontal recti, do not approach, what's this way? What is wrong with this picture? Oh, this is, I got this picture from some dumb anatomy book in ophthalmology. And if you notice, the arc of contact's the same. Not true. The orbit is, is out, so the arc of contact is much longer on the lateral. Lateral rectus muscle. It has the longest arc of contact for rectus muscle, not the obliques, but for the rectus muscle. It's connected to the inferior oblique. You have a lost lateral rectus, find the inferior oblique. Does the Fodden suture, the Fodden operation, work on the lateral rectus muscle? Fodden in German means suture. So if you say Fodden suture, it's like suture, suture, you know, Fodden operation or Fodden procedure. It doesn't work well on the lateral rectus because of the long arc of contact. It works better on the medial rectus. Now, the superior rectus muscle, well, actually, the vertical rectus muscles have two functions, three functions, not just elevation, but adduction and torsion. And you actually can figure it out on, right there on the boards, if, if, if this is my left eye right here, right? And the muscle's coming at an angle 23 degrees. This is the cornea, my knuckles. I'm pulling in a little bit. So the superior rectus is going to be what? An adductor, right? And superior, superior rectus muscle is kind of intorting. So it's going to be what? Intorter. Inferior rectus muscle is the opposite, except for it is an adductor, but it's an excyclotorter. Now, here's that question. When is a vertical rectus muscle a pure elevator or depressor? This is from Gunter von Norden, who's retired, a great strabismologist. It's from his atlas. And here's the normal situation with the eye in primary position. But if the eye rotates out, this is the nose, here's the ear. If the eye rotates out 23 degrees, the muscle is in line with the visual axis, and it is a pure elevator. When is the vertical rectus muscle not an adductor, but an abductor when it rotates past 23 degrees? I have only one function. We know the answer to that, 23 degrees of out, or X, X rotation. OK, what happens when you recess the superior rectus? You get the lid coming back. So if you have a little bit of a ptosis, and you have an option in your strabismus planning to recess the superior rectus. I recess the superior rectus. It'll make the lid fissures wider. This has uh, always been a confusing point, the relationship between the inferior rectus, inferior oblique, and the eyelid. And, and I put this drawing together for a paper I wrote some time ago, some time uh, ago, and I think it's, it's pretty, it helped me th think about it. The tarsus is the, 